Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas with IEP Communications and today I'm doing an interesting test. I will be using these two cameras, oh, let me get that out of the way. I'll be using these two cameras and testing live, live air action and Switcher Studio to see how they compare in terms of recorded video quality. Let's do that. All right, once again, I am talking to you. I'm actually live switching this with the streaming software. I have uh, the two cameras right here uh, going into two different iPads. Let's go to this shot right here, going into two different iPads. I have the Switcher Studio camera is going into this iPad and the Teradek Live Air Action iPad uh, phone is going into this iPad. Both are iPad Pros. Both cameras are set to 720p 30 at 4 megabits a second. Uh, both are recording internally. Everything is wired. So everything is wired. There is no uh, wireless dropouts. Or I mean, all of these pieces are wired. That camera over there, the behind the scenes camera, that is on wireless right now going into the Google Wi-Fi, which is then wired into the system. And over here, I have a behind the scenes iPad which is also wireless. So you can see that the fact that I am actually recording here, I am recording here, and I am live switching this as we go. Uh, I can't show you the setup uh, live, but I've recorded that so you can see that I have indeed set both of these to the same settings. Here on Teradek, we are using 720p. It'll go up to 1080, it'll even go up to 1440. Uh, we're using 720p. Like I said, the data rate, we're down here at 4,000, but this will go up to 10,000 kilobits a second. And, but we're down here, we are set at 4,000. Let's go back and 30 frames a second, audio bit rate is 128K. So we're done on the Teradek. It's gonna resync the cameras to that. And then we're gonna come over here. And what I've got is I've got a custom RTMP on Switcher Studio, we come in here, my channel, and then I've got 1280 by 720, which is as high as we can go here, and 4000. It can go up to six, but we're gonna go at four, sort of like a mid-level um, setting, and audio bit rate and everything is default. There's no frame rate setting, okay? And that is how we have Switcher Studio testing. And then over here is uh, the Teradek, and I've got more going on over here because this will be my master, where I've got my two cameras that I'm testing, both wired. Uh, there's the camera I'm gonna open and close to. This is behind the scenes camera. Uh, this is my microphone. And then this is a camera I'm gonna have back here looking at the interfaces, as well as my handheld camera doing a little bit behind the scenes. So you can see there's the master DSLR coming in to uh, overlooking my two uh, iPhone. These are iPhone SEs, 4K capable cameras, uh, both with no zoom, so they're both native. In this battery of tests, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm doing head-to-head. -head. In this test, I am doing Switcher Studio versus Teradek Live Air Action. I will also be doing Switcher Studio versus Cinemaker. And then I will be doing Cinemaker versus Teradek Live Air Action. In essence, pitting all three of the, the solutions that record in the iPad against each other to see which one delivers the highest quality video to the end user, whether they be streaming or recording. So now let us take a look at the iPhone cameras. Uh, that will be right here. So now I'm talking to the SEs which are literally an inch apart. The two lenses are put together like this, uh, and both are recording at four megabits a second, 720p30. Now, the Teradek can actually record at 1080, so there's a, an advantage there that I'm not using, and it, uh, as I showed you, the, the t maximum bit rates of both cameras are different. Plus, the Teradek also gives you the ability to sharpen the image coming in from the camera itself, which I'm not doing. 
Both of these cameras are coming in fully auto, probably autofocus. They're probably going to hunt while I'm talking to you. And that is deliberate. I wanted to just let us see the video quality of the recording apps internal compared to each other at 4 megabits a second. I could try to do other tests, but I'm going to try uh, 4 megabits as a starting choice. And... Um, I have the logo up on each of the different things. I'm going to put them side by side so that you can see um, how they compare straight out of the box, as they say, in terms of recording a long program where you don't have the ability to do finesse the edit after the fact. You need to ship this product away. Or in terms of the live stream itself, you want to ship out the highest quality live stream with, you know, high megabit. And let's just say you can push a 10 megabit stream or a 6 megabit stream up to the internet and how good is that going to look coming from the device that you're using. That's what this test is for. This is the second test between Live Air Action and Cinemaker. Some changes from the first test. In this test, we had to lower the data rate to 3000 megabits per second because Cinemaker offers preset levels. So there is no 4000, there's a 3000 and a 7000. 7000 obviously is gonna be a much larger uh, bit of data. So I went down to 3000 and then I adjusted Teradec manually to 3000. So they are both at 3000 megabits per second, 720p30. Both of these apps can actually record 1080, and both of these apps can also record a much higher data rate. But we want to keep this test kind of similar all the way through, so we went down to 3000 here. The last test will be between Cinemaker at 3000 and um, Switcher Studio at 3000. Uh, also, in addition, uh, the previous test was all wired uh, because of some technical difficulties. Right now, only Cinemaker is wired, and Live Air Action is actually wireless between the camera and the iPad. Uh, although, these are the only two devices on this iPad, and it's only three megabits a second on a device that is capable of handling many cameras at one time, so I think it's pretty comparable to being on a wire. Uh, so this has been a test of Cinemaker and live air action at three megabits a second. And this is the third test. Right now I am recording live to both Switcher Studio and Cinemaker. On Switcher Studio, we are wireless again, and the data rate, as I found out, does not go to exactly three megabits a second, so we are at 3,200 kilobits a second. So 3.2 megabits a second, but I went higher rather than lower because in my experience, uh, the live stream recording is always a little bit under the cap that you set. So it may exactly time out at exactly three megabits a second. On Cinemaker, we are still at three megabits a second and we are wired. Switcher Studio is wireless, again, through uh, a hub. And these are the only two devices on the hub, the phone and the iPad that's doing the recording. So this will give us a very good test with the same level of camera, the exact same camera, NSE, on both recordings and both recordings being made at the same time, at the same data rate, at the same frame speed, at the same distance. Uh, so I think this has been a pretty good test overall and I am really interested to see what the results bring. And now we are into the second portion of our test, which is 1080 and the highest bit rate each device can record. With this test, I am recording all three of the same tests. Right now I am recording Teradec Live Air Action at 10 megabits a second, wired at 1080 P30 and Cinemaker at Full, or what is it? Uh, let's see. Go over here. Best <laughs> at 1080 P30 and also wired. So there's this is the best that each one can do. So if I move around a lot and try to confuse the codec, what is going to happen? I don't know. But this is the best that each one can do. 
and they're both set on autofocus and I actually added the light on the one camera. There's a little bit of a face fill for a little bit more um, foreground brightness and we shall see if, you know, which one of these two 1080p recording systems, which one of these can come out ahead. And this is test number two. I am testing Cinemaker at 1080, which is going to be squeezed down to the 720p timeline, and I am testing Switcher Studio at 720p, which is the highest that it goes. Both of these are recording at as high quality as they can, Cinemaker at best, and Switcher Studio at 6 megabits a second. This is going to be an interesting test. I have adjusted the image parameters a little bit to try and avoid some of the, the clipping on the face and everything. So I'm trying to give these the best image possible for each of the things, although I'm going to move my hands around in front of the camera and see if that does mess around with the uh, compression a little bit too. But if you are trying to deliver the highest quality product in the recorded stream, in the stream itself, then this is the video that you're going to be able to deliver from these software packages. And this is test number three. This test is pitting Switcher Studio versus Teradek Live Air Action. I, the Both cameras are wired, both devices are recording at the highest quality possible with Switcher Studio, that is six megabits a second at 720p. With Teradek Live Air Action, it is 10 megabits a second at 1080p. Now, I had to juggle the devices because um, I have two different networks going on and these two devices are connected for Teradek, those two devices are connected directly to each other, uh, not to the internet. And with Switcher Studio, I can't, it's a little bit of a harder issue to swap devices back and forth because I have two devices to test three apps. So I have to do a little app juggling and Switcher Studio always wants to verify that it is, it is allowed to work on that device, which makes sense because it's a subscription product. Anyway, if I move my hands a little bit like this, uh, that would maybe confound the codec a little bit, maybe. Um, but other than the fact that I've s changed iPads from when you last saw Teradek, now it's over here, when you last saw Switcher Studio, now it's over there. Other than that, um, everything in this test has been as accurate as I can make it for these tests to see which is the best quality product for recording the master live switch in the iPad and to push to your stream. That's what this test is all about. Well, I hope this video has proven useful and you found a tool which fits your needs. And by looking at the video quality that you can get from these devices, and admittedly, these are iPhone SEs. Newer cameras are gonna give you incrementally better quality. But this is not a test of the camera, this is a test of the recording solution that you're using, the software itself. So by using the same camera and comparing the different solutions, you can then say, oh, if I use new cameras, you know, sevens, eights, nines, whatever, what is my best quality recording device going to be? With that, my name is Anthony Barogas with IEBA Communications. Thanks for watching.